Welcome to the Clear Brand Academy podcast, where we take the mystery out of marketing and help you get more leads and sales with a clear brand and proven marketing tactics. I'm your host, Ryan Alexander Toth. Today, we're talking about marketing tactics. I am so excited for this. This is where the rubber meets the road. Last episode, we were talking about the five laws of marketing. And as a quick recap, those are uh, picture a circle. And in the center, we have story. And if you are, I'm going to pull this up. So if you're on YouTube, you'll get to see this right now. But if you're just listening, I'll describe it. Picture a circle with four quadrants. In the center, you have uh, another circle, almost like a bullseye. Okay. In the very center circle is story. Then in the top left quadrant, we have design. Top right quadrant is visibility. Bottom left is connection and bottom right is systems. So the five laws of marketing, again, are story, design, visibility, connection, and systems. And if you missed last episode, I would go back and listen to that before listening to this episode because we're really using engineering as an example of how to approach marketing in this instance. And in engineering, the first thing that an engineer learns is not how to build a bridge or an airplane. The first thing that an engineer learns is the laws of physics and math, right? Now, the great thing about laws is that they don't change, right? The laws of physics are the same and have been the same, but we're building different things now than we were 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago. So while the laws of physics haven't changed, engineering has. Uh, and the same is true with marketing, right? The laws of marketing haven't changed, and they're not going to. We might discover more laws of marketing. We might discover more intricacies of some of these laws of marketing, but the laws themselves aren't going to change, right? Uh, quantum physics is not being invented. It's being discovered. Okay, same thing with marketing here. As we approach marketing, we want to approach it in that same way as an engineer. We're going to obey and really manifest the laws of marketing within the tactics that we're going to talk about today. Now, there are some folks out there who really just don't like laws, right? Everything to them is questionable. Um, so my, my first comment on that is um, I would set out to disprove these five laws of marketing. Feel free to, to attempt that. Um, I don't think it's doable. I've tried. But uh, with laws, a lot of times the reason people don't like the laws is because um, they, they feel kind of rigid and, and controlling. But within that, it, it's, there's, there's a lot of freedom as well. And that's where the tactics come in. Um, the, the, there's an interesting thing here as well where laws are kind of bendable, right? You think about the B-2 stealth bomber, okay? This thing should not fly. The, the engineers who designed this uh, are incredible. The, the B-2 bomber is basically a wing, right? It's just a flat piece of metal, essentially. It's basically a wing, takes off. It wants to crash. But what the engineers have done is they've uh, designed computers that will regularly change the ailerons and the different uh, parts of the plane, uh, keeping it in the air. And so they're able to bend some of the laws of physics or kind of get around them with modern engineering. And I think that's also true with the laws of marketing. I don't recommend it, but I'll tell you one of the ways that I've seen folks do this just to kind of get ahead of uh, some of the criticism. The the main area where people are going to be able to bend the laws of marketing is in design and systems. And let me tell you what I mean. Uh, if you have really, really good content, so a really good story, you don't need as good of design. Now, does that mean that you should choose to not have design? No. As I mentioned last episode, I don't believe in the either or. I'm going to look for the both and wherever I can. And I think hiring a designer is a very simple step that you can take to ensure that you have both good content and good design. But there are people out there who really uh, dive into what is called long copy. So long web pages that hardly have any design at all. It's mostly just a bunch of text. And they will swear by that. Now, I see that kind of as this B2 bomber, right? It's basically a wing 
It's not designed to stay in the air, but you can make it stay in the air. You can force it to stay in the air. And does it fly as well as a regular airplane? No. It's more likely to crash, but it can fly. And long copy without design, I think, is the same as that. You can do long copy with design. And if you're setting out on your marketing journey for your company, I see no reason to not have good design. I think you're essentially building uh, an unflyable airplane and you're trying to keep it in the air with a computer, just like the B-2 bomber. I, I do not want to take a commercial flight from Colorado to Florida on a B-2 bomber. I would much rather fly on a 737 because the 737s are far safer. Same thing with your marketing. Just, just hire a designer. It's that easy. It's a very easy step. Now, the other place that people might really dislike these laws of marketing is with the systems. Do you need systems? I mean, you can choose to do everything manually. Uh, that just sounds like a terrible decision to me. Why would you choose to do everything manually? Why would you choose to email every single person uh, daily or every other day or whatever your frequency is? Why not use some automation? Why not create some standard operating procedures for your team? Uh, it, it, to me, is uh, an oversight to fail to have systems. I think that you're setting yourself up to crash, just like the B-2 bomber, right? The, uh, the stealth helicopter that the Navy SEALs used when they went to uh, uh, kill Osama bin Laden was this same basic thing. It, this thing does, it barely stays in the air. And the Navy SEALs knew that. So when they were practicing and training to go uh, to take out Osama bin Laden, they actually planned on one, at least one of their helicopters going down because it barely stays in the air. So again, if you're getting on your marketing journey, you've got a company, you are engaging in marketing, why would you choose to violate these laws of marketing and risk crashing and burning? I think it's such an easy decision just to do all five, story, design, visibility, connection, and systems. So with that quick recap, let's now jump into tactics. So again, if you are on YouTube, you're going to see uh, what we call the marketing flywheel on your screen. Um, now, the marketing flywheel, it encompasses the five laws of marketing and it applies them in doable steps. So let me describe this to you and then I'll give you a brief overview and then we'll jump into the steps that are here and what your marketing will look like in 2022. At least your digital marketing. Again, we're not going to get into direct marketing and billboards and things like that. At ClearBrand, we focus on digital marketing. Um, that's what we know best and so that's what I'm going to be talking about here. So uh, picture a triangle. If you're listening, and I'll, I'll describe this, what this looks like to you. Picture a triangle. Uh, in the center of the triangle is the word website, right in the middle. Um, along the right side of the triangle, uh, and this is a triangle where the point is up top. It's a flat, the flat edge is across the bottom. Um, it's not a right triangle, all right? Uh, so it's, it's symmetrical here points up top along the right side the are the words increase traffic okay and rather than just having a, a flat edge the right side is an arrow pointing down to that bottom right corner um, then across the bottom we have generate leads and across the left side we have get sales and all all of these are arrows so really what we're looking at is, I mean, if you could bend these and turn it into a circle, but we're looking at this cycle where we're increasing traffic and then we're moving into generating leads and then we're moving into getting sales. This is uh, our marketing flywheel that we use in the marketing that we do for ourselves and for our clients. We actually do the exact same things for ourselves we do for our clients. Our principle is if it's not good enough for us, it's not good enough for our clients and vice versa. So this is all that we do over and over. Um, so first I'm gonna go through the different parts here uh, and then we'll get into why is it a flywheel and what is, it, what is a, uh, a flywheel. But uh, first I want you to understand the parts. So these are based on, like I said, the five laws of marketing. Throughout 
all of this, you're going to have content that abides by the story law of marketing. You want everything that you create to be beautifully designed. We are increasing visibility throughout the course of this cycle. And we are uh, walking people through the steps of connection, which we talked about in the last episode. The steps of connection are first, you got to know who you are. Second, you got to meet someone. Third, you're going to get their contact info. Fourth, you're going to take them on dates to build trust and eventually close the deal. And then fifth, you're going to, you're going to scale up, right? So what this looks like with your, uh, with these steps, when you, knowing who you are is the equivalent of uh, having a blueprint, right? This is having a blueprint, having a brand story, having a, a plan for the flywheel. Then uh, meeting people, we're going to do that with your website, which is why that's right in the middle. Then uh, we're going to be uh, getting contact info with, that's how we generate leads. Then uh, going on dates to build trust and eventually close the deal. That's the equivalent of getting sales here on this flywheel. And then uh, last is increasing traffic, right? So we're going to scale up. We're going to get more people into the flywheel. Now, if you're looking at this screen or you're picturing this in your head, maybe you drew it on a napkin, you'll notice that there were five steps to, uh, of connection. But there's only four things here, right? We have the website, increase traffic, generate leads, and get sales. What's missing is the blueprint. Now, the reason is the blueprint's not really part of a flywheel. We would call the blueprint part of the foundation. We're going to do the blueprint, um, but that is itself not a deliverable, right? If you order an airplane or you want to go on an airplane, um, you don't need to look at the blueprint first. If you're building an airplane, you need to look at the blueprint. So that's why the blueprint isn't on page here. It's not part of the flywheel. It's because we're really talking about uh, the airplane. We're flying in the air. We're going from point A to point B. We're getting results. Uh, so we are going to be uh, creating a blueprint first, but we just don't visualize it in the flywheel because it's not technically uh, a deliverable of the marketing. Um, okay, so now let's go through these specific tactics for 2022. So the question here is, how are we interpreting these laws and turning those into tactics for today's marketing environment? Going back to engineering, like I said, the laws of physics don't change, just like the laws of marketing don't change. You have to be visible. You have to be using story. You have to be building and reinforcing memories. But these tactics can change. And so how are they changing today? Some really obvious elements. We are in the digital world. That does not mean that you should not use direct marketing or um, billboards, things like that. <clears throat> At ClearBrand, we focus on digital marketing. So that's what I'm going to talk about because that's what we have experience in. And I don't want to pretend to know things that I don't. I am always working on learning more. And with that in mind, I'm going to be sharing what we at ClearBrand do. I am not talking sp that I'm not saying that uh, something else won't work. I uh, think going back to this picture of the Olympian with the Olympian DNA who can go into the gym and do anything and gain muscle. Uh, there are going to be a lot of things that work for different companies, especially if, if you've got a bunch of uh, venture capital, let's say, and you can dump a bunch of money into this without having to make money. You know, things like that are going to change how you approach some of this stuff. At ClearBrand, though, our goal is to take those five laws of marketing and then get to the point of profitable customer acquisition as fast as possible. So here's the strategy and tactics that we've developed to do that. Now, we've applied this to companies in, in many industries, uh, from nonprofits to sports, uh, commercial, B2B, B2C, uh, supplements, um, janitorial services, all sorts of stuff. And we've seen this work. So my hope is that over, you know, as we continue to do this, we're validating this with every new client that we work with. And so far, it seems to be doing well. It seems to be validated. We've also based this on research in the same way that uh, there's research on how a skinny guy like me can build muscle. 
differently from how a person with Olympian DNA can build muscle. And the, the great thing about the skinny guy research is that will work for anybody. So even if you have Olympian DNA and you do these skinny guy workouts, it's still going to work for you. But being a skinny guy or woman means you have to do the things that really work because the stuff that kind of works just isn't going to work for you. So the, again, that's our approach here. So if you're on YouTube, you're seeing six items here. Now this is two different parts of, a, uh, of our Clear Brand Advantage program is what we call this. So I don't necessarily mean to sell you here. I'm, I'm, my intent is still to inform, but like I said, there's a lot of ways you can do this. I'm just going to share how we do it. So we have two main parts of our program. Part one happens over the, first of the, the, the course of the first quarter. And I'll go through that first. And then the second part is ongoing. And it's quarter by quarter. And we believe that it works best when we do this over the long term. And I'll explain why. So quarter one, what does this look like? Well, we're really going to work through the first two parts of what I talked about with making connections and building those relationships. So we start with the brand story. You have to know who you are before we do any of this. In the world of psychology, we call this being integrated. In the world of marketing, we can call this alignment. So you have to be the same company in your marketing as you are in your sales, as you are in your products and services. So you are talking about your products and services in a way that's accurate. And that's what's happening in your marketing. And then when the marketing hands off to sales, the sales are talking about it in the way, the same way as marketing, and it's still accurate. Uh, and this, this can get sketchy for some companies. I mean, talking about sales, um, I have interviewed salespeople who, who outright told me that uh, their company had told them to lie in order to get the sale. That is not alignment. That is not integrity. We do not recommend that. What we want to do is first create great products and services then market them accurately, and then sell them accurately. So this is where this brand story comes in. This is where we're creating the story that we're going to tell, and we are gaining alignment within the company. If the company does not have a uh, brand guide, visual brand guide, or it is not good, it is not compelling, it is not uh, design that's going to build trust. We will also do that at this phase as well. So we're starting with those two first two parts of the laws of marketing and that first stage in the connections steps, knowing who you are. So brand story and then your visual brand guide. From there, we move into strategy. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to talk about marketing strategy. If you're going to go build a bridge, you're going to have to design it first. That's what this is. We're not going to go start hammering away until we have a clear blueprint. So in this second step, and this is still that first quarter, but in the second step, we're going to create the blueprint. And we want this blueprint to be fairly comprehensive. I, when we create a website, that's going to be the next step, but I want to know where we're going after the website as well. If you are building a bridge and you know where you're starting, but you don't know where the bridge is going to take you, it's not going to make it. You're going to have a, a half built bridge that if you drive on it, you're going to fall off the end into the chasm that you were trying to cross. So we want to have an accurate blueprint. That is our second step here. It's the marketing strategy. So if we're thinking about engineering, we're designing the bridge, we're creating this very accurate blueprint before we even start building it. Then the next phase is the website. Now the reason why the website is the next focus is because this in the digital marketing world, and again, we don't do uh, billboards and uh, direct marketing and things like that, but in the digital marketing world, which is where we live, your website is the core. Your ads will come back to your website. Even if you decide to not have ads come back to the website, which is an option these days, you can do an ad that directly generates leads. The social media company will still check your 
website to make sure that your ads are accurate, to make sure that you're um, selling something that is legal, things like that. So your website's the core of your business, whether you like it or not. It is the core of your digital marketing, uh, not the core of your business, right? I would, I would consider that the leadership and the products, but the core of your marketing is your website. Your, so we want that to be absolutely solid. People sometimes ask, well, why aren't we going to run ads yet? Why aren't we running ads before we have a website? Well, in my view, when I invite someone over to my house, I want to clean the house before they get there, not once they're there. And it's the same basic idea. If I start running ads to my website and my website is not getting results, it's not generating leads, it's not generating sales, what am I doing? I'm spending money on ads to send them to a site that doesn't work. That's a waste of money. So it takes some patience to do this, but we're going to do the website next. So for us, that's the first quarter. Uh, we, we really, we call this the foundations, right? We're just building out the foundations. Um, so you're getting your brand story, your brand guide, your visual brand guide. You're getting your blueprint and a website. Um, we, we recommend, even if you're not going to work with us, which again, this is not a sales call, uh, but th this is to inform. I would recommend you go through these steps yourself. Uh, so, or if you're going to work with another marketing agency, great. I would go through it in this order. If you, you can't build a website if you don't know what your messaging is or your design is or your blueprint is. So we have to go through it in this order. Um, you can do your strategy at the same time as your messaging, but what we found is a lot of times doing that messaging, we actually gain an incredible amount of clarity and it changes how we would have gone about the, design, the, the blueprint and the strategy, which is why we want to do the brand story first. Um, all right, so now we have the foundations of your digital marketing built out. At ClearBrand, we're going to now move into quarter two. Um, so however long this is taking, uh, which depends on the marketing agency you're working with or the number of members of your team you have working on this, um, we, we're now going to start increasing traffic and generating leads and converting leads. So again, we're going back to the five steps of connection. And this is it, right? Increase traffic, generate leads, convert leads. And we're going to do it again. Increase traffic, generate leads, convert leads. Our goal is to be doing all three of these things simultaneously all the time. And once we have a foundation in place, we can do that. So we want to be constantly increasing traffic, constantly generating leads, and constantly converting leads. So we view this as, uh, as a cycle. And I'll tell you more about the cycle here in a minute. Um, Okay, there's, that's the basic elements of increasing traffic, generating leads, and converting leads. Now, if we look at what actually gets a return on investment, there's a lot of ways to do those things. There are three activities that consistently get a return on investment. One is SEO. That's things like blog writing. We would also call that content marketing. Really, the core there is the SEO. We're, do, we're writing things that are going to... In, uh, SEO stands for search engine optimization. So we're writing things that are going to increase your search engine optimization that are going to get you to rank higher on Google. Link building, same thing. What this is, it's getting people on other websites to put a link to your website on their website. This increases your, uh, the trust that search engines have for you and it brings more people to your site. And then on-page SEO. So as we write your website, we're going to be engaging in the best practices for SEO, and these change. And this is why we consider these tactics rather than laws. Um, right now, Google owns the search engine space, and so we're going to have to abide by whatever rules they are putting out at the time. In general, they are constantly working toward uh, searcher intent more and more and more. Figuring out, Google wants their algorithms to figure out what is the searcher after and how do we deliver that. So things like keywording and all of these SEO buzzwords that you've heard, they kind of change and shift over time. What so far hasn't really changed and shift is intent. Google wants to figure out what people are searching for, what is their intent, and how do we solve that problem? Google wants to solve their problem because then people keep using Google. Um, so as long as you're really addressing search or intent, your SEO is probably going to be doing pretty good. There's some specifics that you can do to improve that. We're not going to get into here, uh, but really focus on intent. Second thing that gets an ROI, email marketing. This is why we want to generate leads. We want to get contact info from people so that we can email them. 
because email marketing has a huge return on investment. I've seen numbers as, as high as a 40x ROI. That means that for every dollar you spend on email marketing, you're going to make 40. This is incredible. Part of what I love about email marketing is you get to keep it. Right? You, if you're running ads and you stop putting money into ads, you stop getting results from ads. But if you pay somebody to write an email sequence for you and, and to create something that generates leads, you can stop paying them and this will still work. It's great. It's awesome. So part of this, we have to have something that generates leads. We have to have a lead magnet is what we call that. Whether it's a webinar, a video series, a PDF, a white paper, whatever it is, we need to get their email address. And then we send them an automated email sequence. And then we send them to a, a sales page uh, that sells them on your product or service. Um, so that's how we're going to make money with email marketing. The third thing that gets an ROI is ads. Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, things like that. Um, I have seen data that goes back and forth on whether um, posting on social media works or not. It seems like it kind of depends on the person, the influencers, the people who uh, have a million followers, they're all going to say that it works. Obviously, they're the people with Olympian DNA in the social media world. But I have not seen consistent data that says it works all the time. Now, ads on social media platforms, there is much more consistent uh, data there that ads on social media platforms will get great results. Uh, so we're going to focus on the ads aspect rather than the social posting aspect. So this is how we increase leads, generate leads, and convert leads. Okay, now you know the parts of the flywheel, the parts of uh, marketing, digital marketing. And this is really how we're approaching things in 2022. So we have a, a limited number of things that we're doing. We're going to do them over and over and over. And that's why we call this a flywheel. Now, the, the, the flywheel concept, just to give attribution here, comes from Jim Collins. Uh, Jim Collins writes about it in the book, Good to Great. And he talks about how spectacular results are not achieved through some kind of breakthrough program. The companies that achieve spectacular results engaged in a consistent cumulative process. When they interviewed the members of the executive team of the companies that they had uh, deemed great, the company didn't know that it was in the middle of some massive breakthrough. The company was just doing the same things over and over. And this is where that term flywheel started to uh, come from for Jim Collins. A flywheel is a massive disc. And the idea is when you push it, uh, at first, it's really tough. You're, you're pushing the flywheel and it's moving really slowly. The flywheel basically functions on a concept of momentum. So as you push it, the momentum starts to build. So you continue to push it in the same direction at the same speed or at the same, uh, your, your strength is the same, right? You're using the same energy, but the flywheel itself gains momentum. So while you're pushing in what feels like the same direction and what feels like the same energy and strength, the flywheel starts to go faster and faster and faster. And this is what happens in great companies as they're engaging in a cumulative process of good actions, good decisions. Uh, it starts to build up. And that's where breakthrough comes from. So we've intentionally designed this. Jim Collins is talking about businesses and we're talking about marketing, right? So this is a different flywheel from what Jim Collins is talking about, but it's the same basic idea. We have specifically designed this to not be some kind of massive breakthrough program. We are going to be doing the things that we know get results and we're going to be engaging in a cumulative process where we are consistently increasing traffic, generating leads, and getting sales. And the website is the core of the flywheel. We're increasing traffic to the website. We're generating leads on the website. We're getting sales through the website. And as we continue to increase traffic, generate leads, and get sales, this builds up. We build up momentum. So some of the things that I had talked about, SEO, 
SEO is a long game, right? If you're writing blog articles, for example, you want to get into a regular cadence. Consistency is huge with marketing and blogging is an example of this. So each blog article increases your opportunity to get found on Google. If you're writing it correctly, if you're writing it with SEO in mind, rather than just to you know, express yourself. We wanna write with SEO in mind. We wanna write for things that people are searching for. So if we get into a consistent cadence with blogging, this doesn't feel like some massive breakthrough program. It just feels like we're writing a blog every other week. That's pretty simple. Same thing with a, a lead magnet. What we do at ClearBrand is we're gonna create a new lead magnet every quarter. Right? It's just a cumulative, cumulative process. Each quarter, we create a new lead magnet. Bang. This is now one additional lead magnet that somebody can be interested in and exchange their email address for, uh, and then you can generate that lead. Right? Each quarter, we're going to continue running ads and learning and optimizing. And so we're really doing these same activities that I just talked about on a regular basis. And because we are focusing on activities that have a proven ROI, these things work pretty much no matter who does them, as long as they're done with quality and they're done consistent, consistently. So we're not sitting here trying to create a viral video. You can't really reverse engineer a viral video because the stuff that the people who created the viral video did to create that viral video, they also did to create a video that didn't go viral. You can't reverse engineer that. The virality of it was very likely lucky. Um, so we're engaging in things that we know will build momentum in this marketing flywheel. Rather than trying to get you know a million dollars next month, what we're going to do is engage in the flywheel and continue to build momentum over time. And that is how we get results for ourselves and for our clients. The traffic increases over time. We are generating more and more leads over time. We're getting more and more sales over time. Now with all of that in mind, this might feel rigid to some folks. So let's talk about flexibility. Where does flexibility fit into a program like our marketing flywheel? Now, one of the questions that we get is, this is great, Ryan, but what about flexibility? Let's talk about flexibility for a minute. Um, everybody who I talk to, they want to be, I mean, to put it bluntly, they want to be special, right? Everybody does. And that's not bad. That's a, a normal human emotion. We want to be special. In the marketing world, what that means is people want to have a custom plan. Now, my question is, if there's only really a few things that work consistently, and we want to stick to those things, you know, what's the, where does flexibility come into this? So let's, let's talk about this both and idea, structure and flexibility. Uh, I don't really believe in the idea of either or. I'm going to look for a both and wherever I possibly can. My experience with flexibility is that structure is actually what creates flexibility. Uh, people who, you talk to the, uh, the free spirit, right? Well, they're actually not really that free because they don't have the structure in their lives to be spontaneous. If you're moving from place to place to place to place all the time, you don't have a solid job. You're the epitome of free spirit. But you can't go to uh, London on a whim because you can't afford it, right? Uh, you're, you're trapped in the midst of your own instability. But if we have certain elements of structure in place, and we have, let's say, we're talking about going on a vacation, you've got to have the income to do that. 
you've got to have the structure in your within your job so that you can mark a few days off so that you can go. It's that structure that allows for flexibility. Thinking of it in a different way, if you're a musician, you know that all of the songs in the world that are good songs, there's a bunch of structure there. The, the simplest of which is they are staying in a key. And if they change keys, there's a moment in the song where they are intentionally changing keys. That is an incredible amount of structure. right? If, if I pick up a guitar and I just play a bunch of random chords, random notes, that is not music. That is noise. It requires the structure in order to be music. But if you work within that structure, now you have space for the flexibility of writing a song. Same thing with grammar. In English, word order signals meaning. If I say a black bear, you know I'm talking about a bear that is black. If I say a bear black, you don't know what that is. Because in English, grammar, the, the rules of grammar, tell us that the order of the words signals meaning. So I have to obey word order and grammar in order to communicate in a way that makes sense to anybody. That creates structure. But within that, as long as I'm observing the rules of grammar, there's a ton of flexibility. Every book that you've read obeyed the laws of grammar while exercising an immense amount of flexibility. One more example is poetry. There's cadence, there's rhyming with poetry, and within that, you're able to communicate all sorts of things. Um, I, you look at rap music as an example of this. Rap music is poetry. I mean, songs in general are poetry. I think rap music's a little bit more so. It's poetry that's set to a beat, right? It's poetry that is set to music. And you, you look at the all sorts of songs out there, um, country, uh, rap, you know, inspirational, all sorts of things. And they're all obeying. I mean, a, a song is obeying the rules of music and the rules of grammar and the rules of poetry in such a way that what they're saying makes sense and sounds good. And there's an immense amount of flexibility within all of that. So it is our approach at ClearBrand that flexibility exists within the structure. If you abandon structure, you don't have flexibility, you have chaos. So you have to have the flexibility in order to have, you have to have the structure in order to have the flexibility. So going back to these, to what we do, I know that this might seem uh, very structured, and it is, but what we're doing is we're creating the structure around the things that make money. So your brand story, your brand guide, your marketing strategy and blueprint, your website, we're sticking to these things. But within that, within the brand story, there's a ton of flexibility for how you can tell your story. Within the marketing strategy and blueprint, there's a ton of flexibility for how you can go about your strategy. Within your website, lots of flexibility, right? Your website can look, feel, and sound different from other people's websites. And then we get down into the the, the, as the part of our program, the increase traffic, generate leads, convert leads. We do this ongoing, and there's multiple ways to increase traffic. As long as we are doing something that we know will increase traffic, we can also be flexible there. For example, think about blogs. We're going to write custom blogs for folks. And if you're writing your own blog, same thing. You've got a lot of ways that you can write blogs. We recommend writing blogs that people are searching for so that you can rank higher on Google rather than just writing something that makes you feel good. So there's a little bit more structure. But within that, there's tons of flexibility on how you can do that. Same thing with generating leads. Um, let's say you pick a webinar. There's a lot of different webinars that you could, that you could do. Video series, uh, PDFs, you can get so creative in how you gain, how you capture somebody's email address. So yes, there is structure, but there's also a ton of flexibility within the structure. Same with converting leads. So the way that we see this is we've put these boundaries around our marketing and the strategies that we use. 
And these boundaries are keeping us pointing in a direction that makes money. And then within those boundaries, we can be flexible and we can create a custom plan and a custom blueprint for folks that works for them, that enhances their brand, but we're still only going to do those things that, that uh, make money. So you just heard tons of information. You heard the five laws of marketing. You heard the six steps that we take when we're growing somebody's business. It's a, it's a ton of information. Now you can take this and use this to grow your own company. Um, if you are interested in learning more from one of our marketing consultants, go to clearbrand.com, click on hire an expert. Uh, you will be able to schedule a free call with one of our marketing consultants and um, discuss this program and discuss what does this look like for you. But my hope is that you have what you need to do this on your own. Um, if you choose not to, hey, great, we'd love to help. But if you want to do it on your own, my hope is that this episode prepared you to do that and empowered you to do that. Now, we're going to go through some of these specific items in later episodes. I'm very excited about that. Um, so I hope that uh, that provides even more information for you to go apply this to your own marketing. Uh, in the meantime, go ahead, do what you learned here, grow your company, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Clear Brand Academy podcast, where we take the mystery out of marketing and help you get more leads and sales with a clear brand and proven marketing tactics. If you liked this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to outsource your marketing to our team, go to clearbrand.com.